everyone, it's Jen from Sew It Online, and I'm here today to show you all about the Baby Lock Verve. Um, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of different videos on different sewing machines um, so that we can help you find the machine that best fits your needs. So click, click the link below, sign up for our emails. We'll send you all kinds of information and helpful tutorials and videos in the future. So let's get started here. I'm going to show you the Baby Lock Verve. Now this is an awesome sewing machine, but it's also an embroidery machine. And I love embroidery. It's something that I could do with my daughter. And I think that everybody nowadays is, is jumping in the technology world. And even in our sewing machines, we're, we're computer based. So I'm going to show you a little bit about what it does. I'm going to start with the embroidery side because that's my favorite. And I want to show you how easy this thing is to use. Not only is it easy to use on the screen, but it's also easy to thread, which I know you're gonna love. So I'll start there. First, I'm gonna put the thread goes here, and this is embroidery thread that I'm using. And then the cool thing about the baby lock is there's numbers to show you right on the machine how to thread it. So you start with number one, gets clicked in here. Two is right back there, three is under, four is over the take up lever, five is straight down, and then if you could see way under here, there's a six. And then there's a picture here showing me to click it in number seven. And then I'm going to reach around the side and cut my thread. Now this is my favorite part. First, I'm going to lower my presser foot. Watch the needle. Don't watch this hand. Watch my needle. It threads my needle for me. How cool is that? I always say thank you to the machine because, you know, I don't have to thread it anymore. All right, so now that we've got thread in there, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what you can do with this, this baby. Uh, there are built-in designs here in the exclusive tab, and they are categorized, so you can click through and get, you know, there's boy designs, girl designs, all kinds of different designs built in. Um, there's also a tab over here that has some more kind of seasonal borders, a little bit decorative, you could play around with those. My love is the fonts. I'm putting names on everything. And I'll tell you, if you buy an embroidery machine, I promise you people that are gonna want their name put on something. So get ready for it. So fonts are important. When you're buying an embroidery machine, be sure to check out the fonts because those are something you can't add. Of course you can buy fonts online, but it's a little bit different. These you can actually type out a name. Whereas the other ones you're bringing in one letter at a time and it's a little bit more time consuming. So this does have a lot of nice fonts. The other thing that I use a lot is these shapes. So when I click on the shapes button, there's 10 different shapes. If I click on a shape, it's gonna ask what stitch. And I can scroll through and there's 14 different stitch options. So that means with 10 shapes and 14 stitch options, that's 140 different shapes. And I use these shapes all the time. Now, if you're a quilter, you're gonna to wanna to make a quilt label for the back of your quilt. You know, quilts are passed down from generation to generation and people want to know who made it and when they made it. So make sure that you add an embroidered label because that'll stand the test of time. All the washings that that quilt is going to go through, it's really important to do that. I'm going to do it for a towel. I'm going to monogram a towel here. So I'm going to pick stitch six because that's going to show you how we deal with the two color design because this only has one needle. So I'm going to show you how this works. So I'm going to hit set. Now I can do different things with it. And see how easy this screen is to follow? If I want to move the heart, I'm going to hit the move button. And then I can move the arrow down and it's moving it down in my hoop. If I want to hit size and make it bigger or smaller, depending on what name I'm putting in there, I'm going to do my name. Um, so I am going to make it a little bit smaller. Let me move this back up real quick. This center button right here is going to put it in the center of the hoop, which is very helpful to know. So resize, I'm gonna hit this button that has a square with all the arrows pointing in. That's gonna proportionately resize it down or I could proportionately resize it up. I could also squish it, make it fatter, make it taller, all kinds of different things. I'm just gonna make it a little bit smaller here. Hit okay. Then you can also rotate it. You could change the colors, mirror image, adjust the density, which I almost never have to use by the way. Um, and then once you're done, let's add the name. So I'm going to hit the add button right here and I'm going to go pick a font. And again, like I showed you, there's two pages of fonts here. I'm going to select font four because it's just a pretty font. Um, it's one of my favorites. I'm going to select the first letter of my first name 
And then you want to tell it large, medium, or small. Now this is important. After the first letter of the name, then tell it what size. I personally choose the medium size because then I can resize it up or down. Now I want lowercase, and these are all uppercase, so I'm going to scroll over until I find the E-N-N. -N. I could type out the whole name, we're not doing all that. Now this button right here that looks like a bent arrow is an awesome button. Now you don't realize this, but in the embroidery world, we never had this feature. What this is, is if I want to do another line of text. So quilters, this is important for you. You're going to want to put made with love by whatever your name is and then the date. So that's at least three lines of text. This is going to be really important. So I'm just going to put a, a number in here. I'll put a date 2020 so you could see how it looks. I'll go back and delete the date because I don't need my date on the towel. So you could see that. Now I'm going to hit set and see I have two lines of text and they're individual. So I can move the name separately from the numbers. You see that? I can move them all different. I'm going to put that back in the middle, move it up. Let's delete 2020 because we don't need him now. All right, so with my name, I'm going to go into font edit and I can put my name on an arc. I can make the arc tighter or looser. I can also spread the spacing of the letters or adjust the kerning, just like you can on your computer. So they put all this stuff right here on the machine for you. So now you have less need for software and you could just get to sewing right away. Now I'm going to move this down, kind of center that. I think that looks good. What do you think? I think we're ready to sew. So let's move on. We're going to go to edit end. And now it grouped everything together. So I want this to be at the bottom of my towel. So I'm going to move this so that it's at the very bottom of my hoop. And there is this button here, and I call this the trace button. And I always say there's people that trace and people that wish they had. Ask me why I say that. This is actually going to outline where the machine is going to stitch. This way you could check where it's going to go before you stitch it. Trust me, it's a lot smarter to do that because it's really hard to rip these stitches out. So you want to use the trace button. It'll become your best friend. All right, that looks perfect. That's exactly where I want it. So I'm going to hit OK, and I'm going to hit the embroidery button. I've already threaded the machine. You can see when the presser foots up, I have a red light. When the presser foots down, green light, green means go. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit start and let that thing stitch. So it's gonna stitch the first color. As you can see on the screen, it shows me what it's gonna stitch first. So it's gonna stitch the black part of the heart, then it's gonna move on to the red. So then I'll re-thread it and show you how that works. Now the cool thing about embroidery machines is Everybody loves it. I mean, you can put your, anyone's name on something and they absolutely cherish it forever. And it really doesn't take that long. Um, I like to buy towels like this. You know, I pick them up at, at discount stores for a dollar a piece. And I keep them on hand because if I'm going to dinner at a friend's house, then I'll quickly do a monogram towel for them, take it with me with a bottle of wine. You know, that's the best gift you can bring. And it really doesn't cost that much. Um, I'm at the age group that a lot of my friends are having babies and with with Facebook out there you know as soon as they have a baby they post all that information online so I find out the birth uh, the name the birth date birth weight and all of that information and I put that right on a blanket so I get those blankets you know for eight to twelve bucks as soon as they post that on Facebook I embroider that for them and I can take it right up to the hospital to them that's a gift that they're gonna keep forever that's why I like my embroidery machine because I can make gifts for people and they're thoughtful, but yet they're not too costly. You know, I'm a single mom. I don't have a lot of money, but I do like to make things for other people. I love giving gifts. It's, it's something I enjoy doing. So, but yet I don't have a lot of time. So embroidery is what I found to kind of like bridge that gap. You know, I still get to be creative, um, but it's not taking up all my time. But there's other really cool things that you can do with embroidery. It's not just putting, you know, designs on something. There's all kinds of in the hoop projects now with zippers in them. You can make little bags. Um, it's something that I have a lot of fun with my daughter. We sit together on the weekend on Sunday and we have Sunday sew day, um, which really means Sunday embroider day because she's not sewing. She doesn't have the patience for that. She gets that for me. I love to sew. I just don't have time. Um, so this, this is now done. We're done with the green. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and lift the presser foot and we're gonna clip our thread here, pull that through and put in my next color. And as you can see, my machine says that I should be putting red thread in. Do you think it knows that I'm not? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Now, if you're the kind of person that needs to see what it's gonna look like before it sews out, you, I could have gone and changed the color right on the screen so it would have showed green and purple. Um, I've been doing this for a while, so I don't really need to do that anymore. But when I first started, I did, just to kind of test what, what colors look good together. I love that feature. That never gets old. So now I'm gonna go ahead, I've got the presser foot load lower, I can hit start, we're good to go. So if you look here on the screen, it does tell you how many stitches are in this design. It also tells you how many total minutes it's gonna to take to stitch out. This design right here takes six minutes to stitch out. I have six minutes to do this. I could do this while I'm folding laundry, while I'm doing dishes, you know? There's all kinds of things that I can do while this is happening. Most of the time I like to just sit here and watch it though, because it's kind of fun, captivating. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do with the embroidery. This machine has a four by four inch hoop um, and you can, there's designs out there that you can buy and load in with a USB stick. You can download them off the internet. I mean, designs are everywhere. Just start Googling machine embroidery designs and I promise you, you'll be looking for hours. Um, but it's just a regular two gig USB stick, a four gig USB stick, pretty easy to do. Uh, we do have classes on that too if you don't know how to do that so we can teach you how. Now it does hit, it's, it stitches here and it jumps over. So these, these does have jump stitches on it. You can see it knots and jumps and knots again. When this is all over, you can go ahead and clip those jump stitches when you're done. It will not unravel on you. Now the other thing I wanna point out is there are stabilizers on here that we're using and I'm floating the towel. So there always has to be something in the hoop. We do have a class on this. So if you do decide to buy this machine, um, which you can do on our website, you will also get the sewing A to Z class and the embroidery usage class with it. So we can assure you that you'll know how to use this machine um, from start to finish. You'll have the help that you need to get going and start having some fun. All right, so this is almost done and it's getting ready to do the last color, which I think I'm just gonna go ahead and do in purple. I think that'll look nice. You heard that, that was it cutting the thread and I'm gonna show you that it cut it. See how it cuts? So that's loose now. Again, I could just hit start, presser foot's already down. And we're good to go. Now, next I'm gonna show you the sewing side of this because again, this is still a sewing machine. This just has the added bonus of having the embroidery. And that's something that you wanna keep in mind the next time you're out looking to buy a sewing machine. Consider embroidery because it's not just this kind of stuff, it's a whole world of things. I mean, you're, we're doing quilting in the hoop now. We're doing zippered bags in the hoop. We're doing all kinds of different projects. You can piece together four designs and make a bigger block. Um, labels, lettering, you know, there's lots of stuff that you can do. I personally even embroider on toilet paper. It's just something fun that I enjoy doing. And it makes a great gift. So this is a perfect size hoop for toilet paper too, by the way, four by four, perfect size. Plus, I guarantee you that hard to buy for person in your life, you know, the one that has everything, I guarantee you they don't have embroidered toilet paper. It, it's, it's definitely a, a fun, fun gift. All right, so after this is done stitching out, I'm gonna show you the sewing side of this. And it's very, very easy to switch it over to sewing. Um, this embroidery unit comes off and we could just put on the regular presser foot. And there's tons of sewing features. But think about when you're when you're looking to buy a machine, you know, you really wanna if you're if you're looking for an embroidery machine, consider your hoop size. You know, this is a great starter machine because there's a lot to learn. You have to learn all about stabilizers, you know, how how does this design react on a t-shirt? How does it react on a knit or a, a denim? You know, there there are definite things that you need to learn. So start here and then you can always move up if that's what you wanna do. Now, if you have a little bit more money to spend, consider your hoop size. That is the number one thing in an embroidery machine because I hear it all the time. People get hoop envy. That's like an, an actual ailment around 
our shop. Um, they come into class and they say, why is her hoop so big? I want a bigger hoop. Well, you got to get a bigger machine. All right, so that's all finished. It told me it was done. Now I can take this out. So all I do is lift up the presser foot and I want to show you how this works. So I'm going to push back on this that way and then pop this right out. So there's my embroidery design. I'm going to take this out of the hoop. This is a tearaway stabilizer. This is just going to prevent the towel from puckering while we're doing the stitching. And then the front has water soluble, which prevents the terry cloth from poking through your stitches. And that again, I could just tear off like this. Now again, these little jump stitches that are hanging out here, you could just clip those, you know, when you're watching TV later tonight, um, you could just clip those and you have a nice gift. So I hope you enjoyed that. Now let me switch this over for sewing and I'll show you what I can do as a sewing machine because it's pretty awesome what it does in sewing. All right, so now I'm gonna show you the sewing side of the Verve. So I've already taken the embroidery unit off and it does come with an accessory tray, but I wanted to show you that there is a free arm on this machine. So if you had to do a cuff or a sleeve, it's very easy to do. Um, it does have storage on here so you can put all your goodies. So I could put my little accessory pack in here and have it nice and accessible when I'm sewing. Um, I've also changed out my presser foot and you just unscrew this, take your embroidery foot off and put the shank on. The feet are snap-on presser feet. So they just have a little bar here and you just lower it. Let's not get the thread caught in there. Lower it right over that bar and it snaps right on. So it does come with a variety of different presser feet, pretty much everything that's all the stitches that are built in, it'll actually tell you what foot you need to use and those feet all come with the machine. So you're good to go. All right, so let's get started over here. So this is our home screen for sewing. It's right here. This is what it looks like. So there's different tabs on the screen. Number one is gonna be your utility stitches. This is where you're gonna go most of the time. So I have my, my three different main straight stitches. Now what's the difference between these? This is a left needle position straight stitch that's going to do a little back stitch at the beginning and end. This one is going to do what they call a lock stitch at the beginning, but it's also left needle position. And then I personally like to use number stitch 103 because that is a center needle position. And for those of you that are quilters, if you're going to use your quarter inch foot, there is just a hole in that foot. You definitely want to default your machine to that number three stitch because Trust me, if you don't, you'll be hitting the foot and break your needle and you'll have to send your machine in for repair and that's no fun. So, all right, so I'm gonna show you the power of this little, this little machine. It's very, very strong. A lot of people think, oh, those electronic machines can't possibly do what my old, you know, 40 year old machine does. That's totally false. This thing has some, some beef to it. So I'm gonna speed this up. I like to sew fast. Helps if you plug the foot control in though. Although I don't have to sew with the foot control, I can hit the start stop button. Me personally though, I grew up using a foot control. I need my foot control. So I'm gonna go ahead, stitch right over that denim and you see how quickly that goes over with absolutely no problem. I mean, I'm not even pushing that. So I'm gonna turn that. Look, no hands. So this is a good, probably eight layers of denim in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, seven layers of denim, but I could do eight. Notice too that the presser foot lifts even higher. Most of your older machines go about that high and that's it. So if I had this really thick seam, it's gonna be hard to get in there. I can actually lift it up even higher and the whole width of my finger can fit under there. But oh my gosh, keep your foot off the pedal if you're gonna do that, because it hurts. So that's pretty easy. So the next thing I want to show you is this needle up, needle down button. So when I push that button, and this is the feature that quilters absolutely love. Even if you're not a quilter, I, I call them quilting features, but everybody who sews is going to want these features. Every time I stop sewing, my needle's already in the down position. So remember the days when you had to do this and then do this and then turn your fabric? And it just is a lot of work. Now I don't have to touch this hand wheel. 
I can just keep my hand right here by my fabric, lift my presser foot and make my turn. And I don't have to worry about losing my place. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so now how do I go in reverse? That's probably something you're asking. So that's this button right here. I can press it in reverse. And then this is my favorite button. It's the scissor button. It's actually gonna cut my thread and it pulls them to the back. So it keeps them nice and short. I don't have to get out my scissors. I don't have to cut it. I don't have to tie a knot. We're good to go. Um, stitch number three is a little bit different. Well, I'm gonna keep this one. Stitch number three is actually going to lock that. So when I hit the reverse button to stop it, see how it sews in place? It's actually tying a knot right there. So that's going to be a little bit different than the reverse because reverse you're going to see a lot more thread on the top with the uh, um, stitches 1-04 it's going to tie it in place so now we have a little knot tied there and see i can't pull that out it is tied so now no more tying little teeny tiny knots after every seam that you sew that's a bonus all right so what about stretchy fabrics is it going to work with stretchy fabrics absolutely this is definitely an important thing to look at when you're buying a sewing machine, and I'll tell you why. If you're gonna sew on a knit, see this has a stretch to it. If you're gonna sew on a knit, on a stretchy fabric, and this is true on any machine, if I just use a regular straight stitch, what's gonna happen when I go to try this on? Say I've been sewing for hours and I made this gorgeous shirt. Now I put it over my head and you hear that sound. See what just happened? My thread just ripped. That's no fun. You know, two hours of work is gone. So I'm going to select stitch 1-05. That's a stretch straight stitch. So what this is going to do, and I will slow this down so you can see it. It goes up to back one, up to back one. So that's actually going to give your thread a little bit of room to stretch with that knit. And I'm getting bored, so I'm not gonna sew the whole way. I'm gonna show you. So now I could stretch it and it's not going to break. So this is really important to have. That is called tri-motion. When you're buying a machine, if it doesn't have tri-motion, then it's worthless. A lot of our fabrics today are knits. So you wanna make sure that it can handle it. Now the other th uh, stitch that I wanna show you is what's called an overcasting stitch. So I'm gonna use stitch 1-17. Now notice when I select a stitch on my screen, it tells me what presser foot to use, what width, what length, and it's doing everything for me. I don't have to do anything, but let's say I wanted to. All right, so I'm gonna hit this button up here. This is my width and length button, and it opens up this menu. Now I can adjust the width, I can adjust the length um, to however I want. So let's say I wanted a nice wide, I wanna use the full width of my needle plate opening, which is seven millimeters, by the way. I wanna use the full width of that. And then I can even increase the length because I like to go a little bit faster. So I'm gonna increase that to three. So what I'm gonna do now, anytime you're sewing from a pattern, it's gonna tell you to do a straight stitch and go back over with the zigzag or a serger. That's two steps, right? I don't have time for that. Do you have time for that? I'd like to get it done in one step. That's when I use this stitch. So if you don't have a serger, this is a good way around it. Um, but the more you sew, trust me, you're gonna want a serger too, but that's down the line. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and drop my needle in the fabric using my needle up down button. Notice how I never touch this. I don't have to anymore. I'm just touching the needle up down button. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this. And you see it's stitching my straight stitch and finishing all at once. So this is actually gonna stretch with the fabric. It's gonna look more professional and it's just gonna be a stronger seam. But this is gonna mimic what a serger does for you. Now there is a uh, stretch overcast and there's also one for woven fabrics. Um, but this is what it looks like on the back. And then when I flip it over, looks familiar to you, right? and see how that stretches. So that's something that is very easy to do, but now it looks like a real ready to wear garment. So that's something definitely important on your machine. 
Now let me show you another little trick here. You've got a couple other buttons here. You've got a reverse button and a scissor button. If I select those buttons, whoops, I'm gonna go back to my straight stitch, select these buttons. I'm gonna show you what that does. Notice how, did you see that? Do I need to start over? I'm gonna start over. Watch when I start, because I'm not hitting anything. I'm gonna put my foot down, or my needle, sorry. I'm gonna slow this down so you could see it, because it goes fast, you'll miss it. When I start sewing with my foot control, it's actually gonna do a reverse stitch first, and that's because I have this reverse button selected. So now I don't even have to think about going in reverse. Wow, that's too slow. See how that went backwards, and now it's going forward? So that's telling the machine, hey, I want to do reverse at the beginning and end every time. When I stop, it's not going to go in reverse because I don't want it to do a reverse every time I stop. But to tell it when I'm done, I'm going to hit the reverse button again. Just hit it once. I don't have to hold it down. And now it's going to go backwards and then forwards. And it also cut it. Did you hear that? See, it already cut it. So now how lazy can we get? Now I don't have to push these buttons if I don't want to. Once I select them here, they're good to go. All right, so a few other things that I think are essential on here. Of course, there's tons of stitches. I can't go through them all with you today. I'm just showing you a few that I use all the time and things that I think are gonna be important when you're looking to buy a sewing machine. Um, one here is this three-step zigzag. Now, I don't know about you, but because I sew, people are constantly giving me things. Can you fix this? I tore this. Will you, will you hem this? Whatever. This is something I get all the time. They give me a pair of pants that's ripped and it's not on a seam. You ever have this happen? What do you guys do? Normally you're, you're folding this over and you're trying to stitch real close right here. Then you open it up and you end up with like a pucker or a dart because that's what it is. Well, what I'm gonna show you is using the three-step zigzag on the sewing machine. So if this was an actual pair of pants, I'd probably fuse something underneath there just to hold it in place. Um, I would want to pick the same color thread as my fabric. So in this case, I would pick light pink thread. Um, I only have white on here, so just so you could see it on the video. But then what I'm going to do is run that tear right down the center of the presser foot. Using the three-step zigzag, I am going to open up my width and length feature because I do want the widest stitch. I want to cover the most fabric, but I also need it kind of narrow. So I'm actually going to go down to like, let's do 0 0.6. That's probably going to be good. So now I put my needle in the fabric. And again, we're running that tear right down the center of the presser foot. And if I had pink thread that matched perfectly, you wouldn't even see it. So that's how you hem something that when it's not, when it's torn and it's not on a seam. So that's a very important stitch to have. Now there's all kinds of decorative stitches in here too. Again, you've got some decorative satin stitches. You can put a twin needle in here. So you'll get the A to Z video with the purchase of the machine if you do decide to buy it. And you'll also get the embroidery usage videos um, from our website. Uh, but just to show you a few more stitches here, you've got candle wicking. You've got some really nice decorative ones if you wanna do some heirloom quilting or maybe you wanna get into crazy quilting. You've got tons of stitches to choose from. All right, so that's the Baby Lock Verve. I hope you enjoyed this video. And again, if you are looking for a sewing machine, this is the place you wanna be because we're reviewing all the different models and makes, and we're gonna help you find the one that's right for you. So make sure that you subscribe to our link so that you are in the know and you get these videos on a regular basis. Um, and if you do wanna purchase it, you can do that right from our website and you will get both videos, the A to Z video and the embroidery usage video, which is gonna teach you everything you need to know about your machine so that you can get going and get started and start having some fun and making some fun, fun gifts. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you soon.